There aren't many other games on Switch quite like Payday 2, and I don't just mean first-person shooters. Payday has a huge social aspect to it, so huge in fact that playing it without friends wired up with microphones takes it from being fun to, in some cases, almost worthless. Many of these heists demand unity between players, and without in-game communication tools that can be a tough hurdle to overcome. Many levels are designed in a way that encourage being in two, three, or even four places at once. This level, for instance, has an open rooftop of seemingly no use, but a team will find that it can be used as a vantage point. So when others are sneaking through the terrain below, you can call out enemy positions. Payday is at its best when you're all working together and pulling off a heist without a hitch. And that's tricky, as one slip up, and just like an actual heist, it's all over. It's entirely possible to finish most missions just by gunning everyone down, but doing so will not only diminish your reward, but it's also less enjoyable. There are tons of stealth mechanics to take advantage of, and that's partly what makes levels so replayable. Not only will you want to perfect your operation, but each time there are new kinks thrown into the mix. Certain aspects, like camera positions and gates, change upon playthrough. You can go in with an entirely different loadout, and most importantly, who you have on your team makes a world of difference. But let's say you don't have anyone on your team, and you want to go at it alone. Well, then Payday 2 is frankly a bad game for that. To make up for the lack of teammates, you're suited with three computer-controlled allies, and these guys can't do a thing. Many missions require you to pick up loads of cash, and the AI can't even do that. So if there are four of you, you can usually carry it all in one trip. But when you're on your own, you'll have to go back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. The game is not designed to be played on your own, and while the AI will shoot while you're under fire, they won't do a whole lot else. And playing with randoms isn't much better. Because there's no way to communicate with them on Switch, it's very hard to relay exactly what your plan is. A buddy and I were playing over voice chat together when someone joined our heist, and you guessed it, it turned into a bloodbath. It's a game that encourages planning, cooperation, and improvisation, and to do all that without communicating just doesn't really work. I really can't recommend playing Payday 2 without friends, and the only major perk for the Switch version in this case is local wireless. What better way to communicate as a team than being in the same room as each other? So there are caveats, but when you get a dedicated team together, Payday 2 can be very enjoyable. Not only are many of these levels well designed, but they're incredibly fun just to hang out in with friends. We had tons of laughs just messing around in this game world, and sometimes laughing at it. Many aspects aren't exactly polished, and this ranges from the humorous, being erratically animated NPCs and floating cars, to the more obtuse designs. I've been careful to praise only most missions so far, as a handful are pretty bad. One mission informed us to find the information with no other prompts or gestures. This may as well say, find the thing. It's so vague, and the level's pretty big, so we had no idea where to even start. Poor objectives like this pop up quite often, but for me, Payday 2 is at its worst when levels revolve around shootouts. Many heists encourage you to play the way you want, but a large handful are simply combat-focused, and they're frankly not that fun. One had us protecting a man who's fixing a motorcycle, and the entire level consisted of just waiting around and shooting cops. It was boring and repetitive, and seems to go against the core principles of Payday. Combat should be an option, like a last resort, or for players who simply want to be reckless. And it doesn't help that the controls aren't exactly the smoothest. There's a slippery feeling to aiming in all console versions of Payday 2, and just coming from Doom with its new gyro controls, I ended up subconsciously moving the controller around, but to no avail. With how the Switch is behind in networking, I would have love for Starbreeze to focus on its strengths, and they do it with local wireless, but what about motion controls, which I think are becoming a Switch standard for shooters? Of course, there are still pros to the Switch version. It's very comparable to the PlayStation 4 build in terms of visuals and performance, which is to say, it drops every now and then, but mostly runs consistently, and is of course more up-to-date with new additions and levels to play. There's even a new character called Joy, who resembles the neon Joy-Con with both her mask and shoes. It's a good port, but it has the potential to be a far greater one, and it's something that could very well be addressed via a patch. There are a lot of down points, but Payday 2 is still such a fun game when all the right criteria is met. The right team in the right place with the right equipment is an almost guaranteed night of enjoyment. Anything less, and I can't say it would really be worth your time. I liked Payday 2. It's wildly inconsistent, but when it's good, it's really good, and they did a very nice job bringing it to Switch. It fills a great gap in the library, and if you enjoy other team-based shooters like Left 4 Dead, then this may be right up your alley. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Payday and other things gaming too. Outstanding, gang! I wish all trips to the bank ended so happily.